Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to War in the Pacific Admiral's Edition, our Let's Play series against uh, now Evoken. I'm losing track of all the opponents that we've played. Uh, it is May 8th of 1942 in our game, and so far the war is going pretty well for the Allies, although not, you know, universally so. Uh, we just fought a battle at Batavia in the Dutch East Indies, where the Japanese are trying to finish off our last major position there. Uh, and so the uh, offensive by the Japanese was a bloody failure. They lost about 7,000 casualties. We lost about 3,600. That being said, they did lower the fortification levels there by one. Um, and we are also in the process of trying to reinforce uh, Burma and India because the Japanese have not succeeded in taking those bases yet. Uh, the Philippines look like they're likely to fall in the coming weeks. The supply situation there is dire. Even though our troops are generally in good shape and haven't lost any battles, and in fact have won a couple of battles against some Japanese divisions there, pushing them back to the outskirts of Clark Field, we do not have the strength to push forward without supplies, and so our troops are, are beginning to starve, and that process will probably unfold over the coming uh, few weeks. Um, we are moving into the air operation phase. Doesn't look like a whole lot happened from a naval perspective. I think I saw some red dots near Rangoon, though, so it is possible that the Japanese uh, may uh, be making a bombardment move for Rangoon. I guess we'll see. We'll have to take a look and see what that task force is, but we can see shipping there. Uh, meanwhile, the Japanese are uh, bombing uh, at uh, Clark Field against our troops here. You can see they're bringing in 37 Sonyas and 16 Sallies. The Sonyas are pretty light, but it'll still be good experience for the Japanese crews dropping payloads over helpless troops on the ground who, frankly, probably don't even have ammunition really to shoot back much at the attacking aircraft. Uh, some Oscars sweeping over Japan. Another raid here over Clark Field with some more Sallies and Sonyas, and you can see a few casualties being inflicted on the ground. Okay, some fighter sweeps over central China. Pretty quiet turn so far. We're into the air operation PM phase. Bombing over Batavia. We'll have to take a look and see at how, how the troops are doing there. Okay. A house stagger. Thank you very much for the uh, sub. Appreciate the support. Very generous of you. Some more submarine activity off the coast of Japan. Mark 14 torpedo. We got a hit. The USS sub or the US USS Seal uh, hit the cargo ship Erie Maru north of Battledop, uh, and uh, looks like a single Mark 14 hit it. She's on fire. Heavy damage. 14 Japanese casualties, so it looks like they must be moving. It could be an infantry unit, but it's probably some kind of support unit here because we're getting a note of zero squads, zero engineers, and two non-combatant squads uh, destroyed. Uh, so that was a, a, a cargo ship carrying something. No gurgledy gurk uh, noise afterwards, so the ship didn't sink, at least not right away. Nonetheless, that's a cargo ship damaged. And anytime there is a Mark 14 that goes off, it is, it's a day that is uh, worth being celebrated. Uh, Japanese bombardment attack near Clark Field. We need some blub blub. Yeah, we didn't get any blub blub, but uh, nonetheless, we still damaged uh, the ship. And, um, you know, who knows where they're going? They may have to pull into port to save the ship. We don't know. Uh, bombardment attacks at Clark Field, bombardment attack at Batavia. So other than the submarine, fairly quiet turn here. I'm curious to see how aggressive the Japanese get at Batavia. They did lower the fort levels by one, but they also had a pretty bloody rebuke. So it wouldn't shock me for them to take their time there. We have a decent supply situation there. 17 allied casualties, one infantry squad destroyed, three disabled. So that was a, an effective bombardment turn for the Japanese. Los Angeles expands the port to size two and Kang expands the airfield to size two. So yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a quiet turn. We're gonna have to see what the shipping at uh, Rangoon is if we've got any intel on the ships that are there. Uh, that would definitely be good to uh, to take a look at. And then we're taking some ships out of commission for some refits. So I did issue some orders for some destroyers that were in port to kind of get them 
working on their refits to get those ships upgraded so that we've got some better ASW tech. Because a lot of our four stackers or other old destroyers are pretty terrible at anti-submarine warfare. And the upgrades improve the ships, generally speaking. They'll give them radars, they'll give them more ASW tech instead of just like a single depth charge roll off the back. Um, so that's that'll be interesting to see. Oops, wrong password. That's what you get when you type too fast. Okay, so first things first, do we have any intel on, on these task forces out of uh, Battle Dope? Four ships moving southwest, so they might actually be moving to this island or elsewhere, not sure which. Uh, the seal fired the torpedoes. She didn't get any damage back at her, so she's in good shape. She's still got two-thirds of her torpedo ammunition. So perhaps she will uh, get a chance to, you know, chase down this convoy and do a little bit more damage. If we take a look at the intelligence report, ship sunk for last turn. Nothing. Again, we didn't hear the blub blubs, so we know she didn't sink, at least not instantly. So that's worth looking at. Additionally, one other thing I did order in the intervening time was there's one there's one force of the Prahoda garrison here, which looked like they had some decent number of infantry troops and on this island of Matarum, uh, southeast of Java. It's kind of the last, I think it's the last island we have any Dutch troops on outside of Java. And I figured like, hey, we've got a bunch of uh, flying uh, flying boats. Maybe we can pull some of these guys out of this island and transport them back to reinforce Batavia. It's the only way we're going to get reinforcements into Batavia. And so I did that. And uh, you can see here that we actually got 17 assault value into Batavia. So the Prohoda garrison slash battalion slash one, we got 14 ready infantry squads into the base with 53 experience and 44 morale. The morale sucks, but the experience isn't bad for Dutch troops. We got one anti-tank gun, two mortars, three Vickers and machine gun squads, and a support squad. And hopefully we can pull in another 17 or so assault value next turn. Again, it's really the only way for our assault value to go up. We did lose a couple hundred after that last attack. Um, although it looks like we might have recovered a little bit this last turn. Nonetheless, we still have 900 in the garrison here, plus that 17 that we just pulled in. So we're pulling these guys into certain defeat. Uh, but they're a, they're a unit with a headquarters that's... I don't... I think this is... Well, they're not fully restricted. I could move... Well, could we actually? Yeah, there's there's a couple of headquarters we can move them to that aren't restricted. And then we could like transport them out to Australia, I guess, via flying boats. Maybe that would be a better, a better use. I'm not sure. But um, in any event, we did bring reinforcements into Batavia. It still has a decent amount of supply. It looks like we've got about 32,000 supply there. So uh, that's good. Fortification level sitting at three... One other thing we could possibly do is we've got two really good Australian pioneer squads here on Coast Coast Island. If we really wanted to, we could try and pull in 70 assault value here into the base. These are unrestricted first Australian Corps, 24 AIF infantry section 42s uh, with 40 experience. I guess the experience isn't very good, but they're good units from a quality of, of troop perspective. 70 extra experience probably wouldn't do enough to actually get us uh, to, uh, oh shit. Is the stream there guys? Is it still here? I didn't drop any frames. I'm not sure what happened. I can see that it stopped. Fudgesicles. It's been back for a while. Okay. It says a minute and 30 for, for my counter now. I wonder if, I'm not dropping any frames though, which is the, that's a little bit different. That's not typical, but in any event. So what I was saying is we, you know, we are, we did bring in about 17 assault value off this battalion here on this island southeast of Java to kind of provide some reinforcements for Batavia. And then I was toying with the idea of bringing in these 76 or so Australian Corps uh, troops uh, with good quality units. They're 42 infantry sections, although not very experienced. But I don't know that 70 good infantry squads are really going to do much to, like, help us hold the base or not. They're much better troops than what the Dutch have. Uh, nothing against the Dutch. But they are better troops than what the Dutch have. Uh, but they're not likely, I don't think, to uh, really tilt the uh, tilt the odds. And I guess, I'd you know, now that I'm talking through this, I'd rather just keep them on this island out here. Uh, it's a small atoll. 
but it does give us some ability to fly float planes and maybe get some recon on what's going on in the Java Sea because they're only 17 hexes away with float planes. That's doable. And then the other thing is it also helps keep Japanese float planes out of our slock between the Indian Ocean and Australia. Uh, it pushes any potential bases that they have uh, looking, you know, looking west back like 13 hexes or so. So Coast Coast is a nice island to hold. Um, I don't know. Did Japan historically take Christmas Island? Christmas Island 10 or whatever it is. I, I don't know. Or Christmas Island, Indian Ocean. I don't know if they took either of these islands historically, but they feel like they are important locations so that they can't interdict our supplies going north, north, south. In any event, though, we got 900 assault value at Batavia, level three fortifications and good amount of supply. So if we lose at the moment, it's not going to be to supply. That cannot be said about our situation in the Philippines, where people are literally starving. You can see here this 41st Infantry Division and the 51st Infantry Division both have over 170 supplies, but that's one th less about one third of what their actual supply totals are or need to be for like maximum effectiveness. The second Filipino army constabulary division uh, is one of our best units as well. Uh, but you can see here, it's less than one fourth of its required supply. Uh, the fourth Marine regiment is 65 supply out of a required 328. So these guys are in, they haven't started losing infantry sections to disruption for the most part. Some of the, some of the sections have, but like the Marines here are nearly at full, not full strength. They're a couple of squads low, but they're still like nearly full strength. The problem is that the, there's 1,700 supplies and we need 6,700 and the whole hack. So we have no way of getting more supplies there. Batan is, is drained. There's only 20 supplies there and uh, not much we can really pull. So they're going to start melting away probably in the next one to two weeks. I would guess by the 16th is my guess. Uh, we will have lost at least the troops in front of Clark Field, if not Batan as well. Um, and if we haven't lost Batan yet, it'll just be sort of a mopping up operation. Uh, thank you for the sub, uh, Jimma. That alert didn't go off, so let's turn that on. Appreciate the support. But yeah, so um, Philippines situation, not great. Batavia could be bad because of the Japanese forces there, but at least supply situation is doing okay. Meanwhile, if we go up to Rangoon, we said we saw some ships there, and supposedly we do. We see two destroyers, an APD, and a heavy cruiser sitting off the port of Rangoon. Now, that is a problem because I was sending... Task Force 56 here with 13,000 supply uh, south to Rangoon uh, with some AKLs, quite a few AKLs, which would have been sitting ducks to enemy uh, cruisers. Now, the good news is because these guys are sailing through heavy rain, it doesn't look like the enemy's actually detected them yet. There's no detection over the convoy. Uh, but in any event, um, we are ordering them to immediately pull back to Calcutta for their own safety. I am taking some action, though, to see if we can't catch these Japanese cruisers that are deployed forward. I had hoped they would chase these guys, which they might still do. Japan could spot these guys in the AM phase and try and react out of there and go get the go get them. But if they're going to try and bombard or close Rangoon, I did make a couple of quick changes. I brought the first AVG squadron in with their 36 or sorry, 26 P-38 uh, Lightnings. I also brought in a squadron of uh, Hurricanes, so 16 Hurricanes. So we've got about 40 fighter aircraft based out of Rangoon uh, that will try to secure the base. Uh, what, where is this unit's OB? Calcutta, so let's go. There's only one of these fighters, so let's go ahead and send them back to join its unit. Um, but I did bring in about 40 aircraft into Rangoon. That's not a ton. Japan, according to our intel, has 70 at Bangkok and 34 at Chiang Mai, so they could certainly overwhelm us. I'm banking on the fact that he doesn't have a reason to bomb Rangoon yet other than just the troops, so I'm, I'm hoping he doesn't do like a massive sweep there. He could with those, those aircraft in there, but I didn't really want to race forward like all of my fighter aircraft either as I felt like that might be falling a little bit into a trap. I suppose we could bring the P-40Es that are also in Chittagong up and they can support um, the sweep. But I was giving these guys some escort missions because the general, what I'm planning on doing here, um, just for your awareness, I suppose, is this turn I did go ahead and I moved or I, I changed the orders for these American Catalinas at Rangoon. We have a headquarters with torpedoes, so these guys can actually use Mark, tw Mark 13 aerial torpedoes, two of them for each of these aircraft. Uh, and so we are 
going to use those those PBY Catalinas. There's two groups, so there's about six of them uh, to try and go after those enemy cruisers. I also flew in Albacore ones. We brought in 16 British Albacore ones, which can also drop uh, a torpedoes. So we've got about 22 torpedo bombers at Rangoon, and then I also brought in five terribly not good experienced terrible aircraft uh marine um <laughs> vindicator dive bombers um to try and, and hit these guys additionally i also th was thinking these japanese cruisers might chase my guys north as i try and retreat as if they if they end up finding out that they're there and so i also ordered these b17 d's onto a naval attack here to come in at skip level at a thousand feet uh, and uh, and maybe they can they can tag these guys. So we'll see. The Japanese may withdraw before sunlight, and we might not actually have anything in range. But if they do pick up these these cargo ships, there's a chance they'll swing north. I suppose we could send them into Rangoon and just use them as bait. But I don't really want to give up thirteen thousand supplies, or you know what, like eleven of these AKLs, or however many there are, um, on the chance that maybe we'll get a bombing attack. So I'm ordering them to run away. They'll get to about here before the Japanese probably react. Um, they may see them, and if they do have a, a high enough react level, they may swing north and get themselves caught kind of in the middle middle of this area up here uh, without uh, without any air cover or with minimal air cover is the hope. The P-38s are both set to uh, escort and to run cap at Rangoon. Uh, the Hurricanes are set to run cap at Rangoon. And then we also have P-40s at Chittagong that are set to escort any bombers heading south in the event the Japanese take the bait and run north. So that is the hope. Yes, we did fl uh, swap out one Flying Tiger Squadron with uh, P-38s instead of uh, their P-40s. We were able to scrounge together enough P-38s in training units in the American West Coast, even though we weren't producing them. Uh, and so we have sent those out. And it's working pretty well so far, I think. Uh, we fought a couple of battles and we've shot down like 24 enemy aircraft with the squadron. Um, and I think we've only lost maybe like 12 of our own, maybe more. But the, the squadron was also P40, P40Es before. So these these numbers don't really tell you the full story of what, what's happened since they've switched over. But we've got Pappy Boynton here and BD Wagner, both with seven kills and the squadron, uh, as well as uh, CH Older. So we've got three... Uh, plus we've got quite a few aces in this in this squadron here so it's a very experienced squadron with an uh, experience level over 75 so i don't see any buildup of aircraft so i'm assuming he's not about to launch a major sweep of rangoon quite yet but who knows maybe that's what he was planning this uh this cruiser squadron up here for uh, i'm not really sure um what else is going on the uh, battleship, is she done uh, switching over out of refit? No, I think she's got one more day at Pierside. And then she will be into ready status, or I guess she's got one more system damage. One more day of re repair, and then the uh, system damage will be down to zero, and the uh, engine and flood damage will still be at 3938 for the Prince of Wales, at which point we are going to transfer her back to England jolly old England to complete the repairs. Cape Town was going to take like a year to finish these repairs, so it'll actually be faster, just slightly, if I can get her at more than a hex per per turn, although right now that's not the cruise speed. I could alternate with max speed maybe and get some get some stuff done quickly, if we can though. That's the, the goal. Get Prince of Wales back to England where she will repair more quickly uh, and, and back in the fight. Um, our, our carriers in the meanwhile are on the way to Colombo for refits. So the Lexington and the Saratoga are both on the way to South Africa or not Colombo, Cape town. Um, the Lexington and the Saratoga both on their way there for refits, uh, as well as some cruisers. We're also sending a few smaller warships and destroyers down to com, uh, co uh, down to Colombo to do their refits in the front line. Cause there's a nice, uh, port there. Um, additionally, the... Hornet has arrived at Pearl Harbor, um, and then the other battleships have arrived as well. So we've got seven battleships in port here, including the Warspite, uh, that are just getting rid of some system damage from their bombardment of Midway. Uh, the Hornet has gotten here as well, and so she is uh, resting and replenishing, me, and replenishing her uh, her air crews and whatnot uh, from uh, from some operations in enemy territory. 
What do we have there again? We've got the one fighter squadron of 27 aircraft, and we've got four 18 aircraft squadrons of Dauntless dive bombers. Interesting. Um, and then we also do have some ships under repair at Pearl. A couple of them are going to be there a while. The California was badly hurt at Pearl. She's still got 320 days left. I haven't seen a window where it seems safe enough to send her back to the West Coast because of the Japanese submarines. The plan is to do that with Tennessee here soon um her system damage is at 31 but her flood damage is at 47 um but that's that's the goal is to get her out of there um some other ships here i have also started the process of moving some additional troops to the front so we have some troops that are where, where's this los angeles we've got some troops that are loading up different units in los angeles so we're loading up the 9th marine regiment to go to vavu and then the 58th separate infantry regiment to go to Savi. The reason we're sending those two uh, regiments there, the infantry and the Marine, uh, is at Savi. We've got the 8th Marine Regiment, and at Vavu we have the 2nd Marine Regiment. They both make up elements of the 2nd Marine Division, and so what I would like to do is I would like to get these guys at one base, and then I would also bring in the USMC Engineer Regiment at Pearl, and then in six days, we're going to be getting the 6th Marine Regiment at San Diego. We'll throw them all on transports, get, to, get them all at a base, maybe even in New Zealand. I'm not sure where I'm going to send them yet. I've got to get the transports there first. Uh, but then form up the 2nd Marine Division so that we have an actual fully-fledged, combat-ready Marine Division for counterattacks eventually somewhere. So far, our only counterattacks have been regimental size or less. The Baker Island operation was a battalion uh, Midway was about a reinforced battalion here. We had different sections here that landed and overwhelmed the Japanese there. What? Why is that red? Location, Midway Island. Midway was, by the way, totally destroyed from our bombardment. She's still not in great shape, although her runway service damage dropped by about 10%. Port and airfield still completely plastered. Um, and then the other operation was Savi, where we had a whole Marine regiment take on the Japanese there. Um... So yeah, we've got a limited air operation to try and snare some Japanese cruisers or ships near Rangoon. It could end up bad. We'll see. Uh, what's Intel say? SIGINT. Uh, anything useful here? So someone's planning an attack in Batavia, but we already know that. They attacked there the other day. 12th Division's planning for an attack on Cyan. That could be... Could be useful knowledge. Okay. So if we take a look at the China front, Cyan would be up here. We've got troops that are kind of adjacent and around here. We've got multiple units that are pulling back in into the into the base. We've also got some units that are deployed sort of in the gap up here so the japanese in order to get into chungking from the north they're going to have to drive through this mountain pass and there's two ideal hexes to defend from either this hex which is 8139 or 8140 8140 is mountain 8139 is rough so mountain terrain is better for defenses but also consumes more supply but that would involve surrendering this uh, rough hex which is again a good defensive hex. So we have moved about 1,500 troops in there, and we are allowing them to dig in to some natural fortifications here. We're also allowing some of them to upgrade, take replacements. Not these guys, but some of the units we're allowing to take replacements to try and get them up to strength. And then we've also pulled some troops back towards Cyan, which is sort of a forward post. It's a little bit fatalistic to have those troops in that pass preparing for a defensive, because Cyan has level 4 fortifications, but Cyan's problem is it's in clear terrain, which means the Japanese get armor bonuses and they have several armored regiments. And then we also have, um, you know, the ability to be flanked. So we've got level, level four forts with 900 garrison in Cyan, as well as some troops in the general area. South of Cyan, we've got 2,500. So we've got over about almost 4,000 assault value in Cyan. But again, the clear terrain really hurts. Mountainous terrain is like times two defense value plus the forts, so it's like kind of acts, I think like a, up to a size fix six fort, um, or the rough terrain does, whereas the mountain terrain I think is times three. Um, and you can't, unlike a fort in a clear terrain like in Cyan where you can reduce the fort, you can't reduce the mountain. 
Um, there's no mountain killers yet. So, uh, you know, no, no SS twenties, uh, to, to nuke a mountain out of existence. So that's, that's the other positive of holding up North. The other problem is the roads near Cyan. The enemy can easily flank us. They can move North through these roads and then swing North of Cyan without ever attacking the base directly. Um, and so these, the Cyan is likely just sort of a, a delaying post. Although we've driven back a couple of attacks by previous Japanese players, in and around there, so it's possible. Um, meanwhile, we have been building up fortifications near Quilin. We're up to 93%, almost a level 4 forts, which is nice for that base because that has WD, which I think is wooded terrain, which is like a times 1 or times 2 defensive value. Uh, we have pushed out to the east of Quilin a bit with about 2,600 assault value out to the east, the other big thing that's worth calling out here is because we've done pretty well in Burma and Japan has not taken, I mean, heck, we retook Mole Mine, so like we're way ahead in Burma right now, is that supply line keeps flying from Rangoon to, uh, I think it's Kuming, and we get 2,000 free supply, maybe it's actually Suyong, I'm not sure which base it is or Pashoan, but we get 2,000 free supply in one of the, or maybe it's Kwaitang, Kwaitang? I'm not really sure. In any event, we get 2,000 free supply in China every single turn that that base remains intact. And then also we had like 200,000 supply just sitting around in different bases in, in Mandalay. And so that was also allowing supply to just sort of flow eastward into China um, sort of naturally. Rangoon's fortification level is 3. Pegu is probably the more important one because the enemy is going to probably try and bombard it with battleships. It's a little more exposed. You can't bombard battleships or Rangoon because it's up a river, but Pegu is exposed and on the flank. So we are working on fort fortifications at both of those places. Well, uh, Sh Sholo, the uh, previous players did not do a good job of closing the supplies to Rangoon. We, we poured a ton of supply in. The uh, Japanese were hung up uh, at Singapore until February, and so we were just cramming convoys into Rangoon as much as we could while they were using their air power primarily in the south. And now we're still trying to sneak small task forces in to keep the supply up, although it seems like things have ebbed a bit. We did retake Mole Mine. We've got 15,000 supply there. Pegu has 5,700. Uh, Rangoon has 30,000. So like a lot of these bases have sort of the assigned stockpile amount 3,000 there, 3,000 at M M Milika. Mandalay only has a thousand. The show has almost five thousand. Um, but yeah. Additionally, some American troops have arrived in India. You can see here we have actually quite a few American units here. Fifty third separate infantry regiment has arrived. Uh, the first USMC Air Wing Base Force, so basically an aviation support unit of Marines. The 808th EAB, which is also another engineer unit here with 13 engineer vehicles. They've arrived at Karachi. The 10th U.S. Army Air Force has arrived in Karachi as well. Um, and then the 223rd Field Artillery Battalion with uh, 1,205 millimeter howitzers has also arrived. So American troops are beginning to arrive to defend the Empire because, I guess... America has decided it's worth defending the British Empire, supposedly, I guess, maybe. We are setting up a new convoy here to try and pour more fuel into Australia. Our supply situation in Australia and our fuel situation in Australia is generally good, but with submarines closing Perth over the last few weeks, we do need to push more through. So we did get a sort of group of tankers here. We've got five of them that all move at least 12 knots or better. Uh, we're going to cram about 44,000 fuel onto those uh, tankers. We have over 370,000 fuel in uh, Cape Town. We're going to try and get them into Perth to uh, to help the supply situation out. Australia produces all the supply it needs. It's very efficient at that as long as you provide it the fuel it needs. Often in the game, it is actually more efficient as the Japanese or as the allied player to just dump a bunch of supply on ships and send the supply directly rather than fuel. But if you can get the fuel to Australia, uh, then you can get a ton of supply um, easier than sending convoys because if you're trying to move a fleet that needs fuel to move but then you're also trying to build up troops in australia then you've also got to send supply or or just even more fuel and you don't have the tankers to really do that um, in our case we did manage to pull about 200 to 300 thousand fuel out of the dutch east indies before the japanese shut that down 
into Australia. So we got a, a nice head start on some of that supply production based off those stockpiles here. You can see over half a million fuel still sitting at Sydney and then also over 700,000 um, supply sitting at Sydney. So Australia's in pretty good shape uh, from a supply situation here. Um, and I'm not sure there's anything else worth really, really calling out. This was the game against XTRG General. Uh, we then moved on to Lieutenant Rainbow Slash, who then handed it off to Lod Lodric, who then handed it off to Hartwig, and now we're playing against Evoken. So we've had a few opponents, <laughs> but uh, I'm hopeful that uh, that we've got one for the long haul now. Evoken had been doing my logistics a while back, so I'm hopeful. We also did spend this turn to get some fuels to put on these transports. We're going to move them off map to South, uh, South Africa at flank speed. Um, off map to off map point at flank speed is doable. Um, and then uh, obviously they only carry half the, uh, the fuel component instead of supplies. But um, we've got several task forces moving out of the U.S. East Coast to do that. Well, Shu, I'm not, I'm not really interested in restarting. Honestly, like, so here's, here's my, one of my issues is playing with the allies. December is not fun. Like it's not, I get, it's probably a lot of fun for Japan. You're just like, you know, seal clubbing or whatever, but like, it's not fun as the allies to play December. So we're finally getting into the part of the war that I think is fun. You're getting into the period where the allies are strong enough to counter punch or to parry Japanese punches. And you're getting to the point where like Japan still has a clear advantage at this stage, but that will change and things will become much more even. And, and I think things will be very even, even if there's a midway, like Japan still can do things up until like mid 43, late 43. That's when things really turn against them. But we're like finally interest in entering the part of the game that, uh, that is, I think fun, uh, for both sides. So um, that's why I'm excited to keep playing. Okay. Flank speed is a little, is treated a little differently. I don't know how to explain it, Darth, but flank speed is treated differently between two off map bases. It's not exactly the same. Yes, your ships can still take damage and system damage and things like that, but it's not, it's not exactly the same. Meanwhile, the Arizona boys... No memorial for these men. They're going to be ready to fight in two days. The Arizona will complete her repairs. I think she was refit, too. We'll be able to send her off to Pearl. Uh, the West Virginia is 44 days away. The no battleships there. Oh yeah, the Maryland's already ready. So once Arizona's ready, we'll we'll package her up with the Maryland and send them send them out to Pearl, getting us some more gas guzzlers, good old American power. Okay, and then we've got uh, at San Diego, we've got the Pennsylvania under repair for about the next three months. In terms of aircraft loss last turn, it was really quiet air turn in the air. Two aircraft lost on each side, ops losses. A Topsy and a Zero, a Hudson and a Mitchell. Ship withdrawal, I don't think anybody's due yet. Looks like the next due is a troop transport, the Equinia, currently at Cape Town. She will not return. She is a... Look at that beauty. A uh, one of those big passenger liners. Fourteen days though, so we should probably pull her out now, right? Do I have another task force? Oh no, there she is. All right, so let's withdraw. She can carry a whole bunch of troops though. Seventy six hundred troop value. It's it's uh it's tough to lose ships like that. But we'll withdraw. Ship withdrawals. What else? Nothing else in the next month. We're going to lose the Pakenham. 
which is a P-class destroyer. Damn, she's got good ASW. Side racks and a rear rack for the depth charges. Eight depth charge racks. Fuck. Ship will not return. And then we also are going to lose the Paladin, which is another P-class destroyer. Another, another good ASW ship. She does return in 43, and then the Panther as well. Three P-class destroyers. Lame. Okay. And then in uh, 43 days, the Wakefield, which is a... Not quite a pretty ocean liner, more of a, I guess, a troop ship. She looks like a painted ocean liner, but. All right. Um, group withdraw schedule. Where are we looking at that? Aircraft, days to withdraw. So P400s and East Coast, Lancers, Air Cobras, P26s in Eastern US, B26s in Eastern US. Pilots here are just training, right? Yeah. Can't withdraw me yet? Hmm. Wonder if they just automatically withdraw. They're currently in the US East Coast. We'll have to make sure to pull the pilots out of there though. The ones who have at least been decently trained. And ship availability. What are we looking at in terms of new ships coming on the line? It looks like we've got the Electrica, Electra, a new cargo ship coming in Cristobal next turn. We've also got the Robert Morris coming at uh, Almeida in one turn. Three days for the Jamestown and the Arunta in six days. CVE Long Island in 12 days. I don't even think she gets an air group. Just sort of a, a true useful for transporting aircraft and things like that british hope cargo or tanker arriving in abaddon in 12 days should be a nice tanker nothing really of note on any of this stuff and uh i'm assuming no pilots are lost with, we did have one mia T. Cole, our most experienced pilot, is uh, KIA, at least the most kills of anybody. I withdrew those Dutch fighters out. Yep, yeah, I did. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for tonight's stream, then. And uh, for tonight's episode of War in the Pacific... I think we'll return tomorrow for some more uh, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought, but tonight is going to be a short one. Having some technical issues here. I can I still have some on my end too, so we're not going to be able to push the stream longer like I had hoped, but we'll take a look at that tomorrow. Hopefully I get some things sorted out. I do appreciate you guys coming out for this abbreviated stream and for this episode of War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. Jemiah AU, thank you for the resub. And A House Dagger, or Dragger, thank you for A House Dragger. Thank you for the sub as well. And uh, until next time, guys, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you very much for coming out. And until next time, I'm out. Bye bye.